Okay, good morning. We are going to try to do this fancy cube pedestal, the base, the bottom face. Uh, so we're, I'm going to call it the bottom pedestal, bottom pedestal, because that's what everything sits on. You can call it the bottom face if you wanted to. And the first thing we're going to have to do when we look at this, uh, the shape it has a top piece here that is 175 by 175, this square on the top. And then there's a square at the bottom, which is 125 by 125. And then it has this twist in the middle. And if we look at the instructions in the middle here, we're going to have to create a diamond shape and then loft it to pivot it around. All right, so here we go. Now the key tool here is going to be the tool loft. And if I use, let's just do a real quick example here. I'm going to do it on the front plane and I'm going to start with a circle because it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this as an example. And then I'm going to do another sketch on the top plane and I'm going to draw me a square over here. It doesn't matter what size it is because I'm just doing an example. And then I'm going to use this tool loft. And if I use this, <coughs> it's asking for the profiles. And so I'm going to choose this square and I'm going to come up here and choose this circle. And what it's going to do, well, it should happen, is let's try this again. I should be able to get it to, well, there we go. <clears throat> it's just a matter of getting it to, to think through the process. And what's happening here is it's creating a morph between the circle and the square. So that's kind of what's happening there. <clears throat> it's kind of morphing the two pictures, two shapes together. And you can do it with any, uh, any two shapes, three shapes, four shapes. Uh, it, will, uh, it will work with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do three. Uh, and we're going to be using an offset plane. Okay, so let me delete these guys and go back to isometric and we're going to start off and this time i'm going to do it on the top because i feel like it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to to see what i'm doing so i'm going to start on the top plane uh, i'm going to click on top here and i'm going to do my rectangle and it's 1.75 and 1.75 enter and there's my top section. Let's go back to isometric so we can see what's going on here. We're going to extrude this shape and we want it to extrude 0.25 because that top piece is only 0.25. All right, <clears throat> now, green check mark, now I'm going to click on the bottom of this cube over here, the bottom corner, and tip it up because I want to do an offset plane off of this bottom piece. So here's my offset plane and I'm going to choose this surface. And if we come back here and look at the instructions, the distance to the next plane is going to be 0.75 because 75 and 75 equals 150. So each one of these two planes is 0.75. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to type <clears throat> 0.75 and that's where this plane where I'm going to draw. Green check mark, start a new sketch. We want to do that sketch on plane one and now I'm going to click to the bottom so I can see kind of what I'm doing here and I'm going to draw a diamond. Now I don't want to use the rectangle tool. I'm going to use the line tool and I'm just going to draw a random diamond. It doesn't matter what shape. I just need to make sure I get it closed at the end here and it closes out as a shape. And then as the instructions say, I need to have them at the center points. The diamond is connected at the center points for the top. So I come back here and I'm going to use my coincidence tool and I'm going to connect this point to this center point. And even though I'm on the offset plane, it's not really connecting there. It's just drawing it so that it lines up where it needs to. 
And I'm going to do this one on the side. This one goes to the bottom and this one goes to the left side. And there's my diamond. It's black, meaning that it's all locked in place. There you go. <clears throat> all right. Back to a little bit of an isometric view. Now I'm going to do a, another plane off of, let's see, offset plane. And this one is again going to be offset from this one. But this time it's going to be 1.5 inches. Green check mark. I'm going to do another sketch. And I'm going to do this sketch off of plane 2. So I'm going to draw the picture on plane 2. Go back to the bottom view so I can see what I'm doing. And when I look here, this bottom square at the bottom is 1.25 by 1.25. So square, random square, don't care, 1.25, enter, 1.25, enter. And you'll notice it's not in the right place. And it's blue because I don't have the, the measurements locked in yet. So now I need to figure out how far in do I go from here to the edge. And if this is 1.75 and this is 125, when you subtract those two, you get 0.5. And that 0.5 is going to be divided by both sides. So it's 0.5 divided by 2. And that means there's 25 over here and 0.25 on this side. So I go back and I'm going to dimension from the little square to the line on the big square. It's going to be 0.25. And that makes it automatically 0.25 on this side already. I don't need to dimension that one. And then I'm going to go from the bottom dimension. And this one's also going to be 0.25. And when I do that, it puts the square into the center of the bigger square. Green check mark. Everything's lined up. I'm going to go kind of isometric here so I can see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to use my loft tool. The loft tool, I can choose multiple planes. I can choose multiple shapes, but it matters what order you do things in. So I'm going to start with the big square. Then I'm going to come down here and choose the diamond. And you can see it start to twist already. And then I'm going to choose the square at the bottom. And this kind of happens sometimes. When I click on it, you'll notice it didn't really twist like it's supposed to. It gave a, it gave a weird uh, kind of warp to it. It looks kind of cool, but it's not quite what I was looking for. So I'm going to zoom in again and I'm going to match vertices. And when I match vertices, it's gonna, what I'm gonna do is choose each of the corners in a row. So this corner and this corner and this corner, what it's doing right now is coming back to this corner. And that's not what I want. I want it to go to this corner. And when that happens, it puts the curve like it's supposed to. So now I have that crazy curve like it's supposed to look as it spins around. Kind of cool looking. So now I got to do my colors. Two finger click, edit appearance. And I want to make this one kind of gray. Check mark. And then each one of these I want to have a little bit of a different color. So each one of the panels. So I'm going to take this panel and I want it to be light blue. Check. And then I want this panel and I want it to be kind of a different light blue. Take this last one over here and it's going to be kind of a purpley. And then if I use my arrow keys, I can spin it around, get to that last gray one. 
and this one's going to be kind of yellowy. I like that green check mark, and it's kind of what I'm looking for. Close the colors, put it back on isometric. I can even come over here and turn off these planes. Oops, that's not the plane. Turn off the planes. I was clicking on the wrong thing and now the planes disappear. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So there you go. Good luck with it. If you have questions, make sure you ask your teacher.